the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Kelvin Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her um, uh, pricey of the, the bill. And uh, Labor supports the enhancing identity verification and border processes legislation. I think it was only going to be a matter of time when this sort of legislation uh, was going to have to come into effect, regardless of the uh, Philip Trainer Smith incident. That was a, a real catalyst, I have to admit. But uh, we were always going to have to upgrade our processes and our systems to, to ensure that um, offenders or uh, you know, people who need to be in certain places were always going to be kept there. So we've relied on the past in, in terms of uh, paper identification, signatures, uh, passwords, PIN numbers, th those sorts of things, and now we're having to move to the next level uh, with the biometric identification, such as retina scanning, uh, thumbprints. I mean, uh, the classic example of uh, biometric um, processes is at the airport, of course, where we have a passport with a photo in it, and now we can go up to the smart gates, take off your glasses, and um, a machine takes a photo of you. And the machine itself can compare your photo as you're standing there with the photograph in your passport and make sure that the face that's in front of the machine at the moment and the passport actually uh, are the same person. Uh, you know, that, that will avoid certainly for people like myself uh, when the um, customs officer used to hold my passport up and uh, look at me and go, oh my God, you've aged in three years. <laughs> that won't happen. The machine won't uh, give that uh, brutal feedback to us. But we have to um, understand the, that the catalyst for the report was the Philip Trainer Smith uh, escape. And so. In, uh, on the 6th of November 2014, Philip Trainer Smith, uh, he, he passed unimpeded through immigration and security checks at Inter Auckland International Airport. He carried a New Zealand passport that had been issued some 16 months earlier in his birth name, Philip John Trainer, and yet he was known in corrections as Philip John Smith. The fact that he was able to sit in prison and apply uh, for a passport under a name that he'd used as a child uh, and it wasn't picked up is because of the fact that customs, internal, uh, sorry, internal affairs, customs and corrections uh, weren't on top of the, the aliases he had used. Now let's understand that there are many people in prison uh, and in the community in general who uh, go by a number of names. Some people have been adopted and have got a different name to the name, um, different adult name to the name they were born with. Uh, there could be any, any reason why they have different names, but it's important that our system keeps track of these names. Previously, we just relied upon the honesty of uh, people, and of course, um, many people, or most people in uh, prison, have, are in fact there because of some form of dishonesty. So, um, Philip. John Trainer was released on a uh, work to release uh, program. It was some uh, 72 hours, I think, or 74 hours before anybody realised that the man who was meant to be on this work to release program was meant to be out in the community was in fact halfway across the Inca Trail and still climbing. The, the, the big issue for Philip John Smith or, or Philip um, Trainer Smith was that he, he had an ego and he once he got to Brazil via Chile I, I believe it was he felt he had to call back to New Zealand an email and uh, let everyone know how smart he was and that was his downfall because I believe even though he was in some uh, backpackers in uh, some town in, in Brazil he was actually recognised because of the uh, attention the media attention over there if it hadn't have been for that uh, the fact that he had an ego that got too, uh, too much for him, he, he would probably still be somewhere in South America. So the biometric uh, identifiers, as I say, they track uh, facial features, uh, iris, retina scans, the thumbprints, it's all done by computers. If someone turns up at, um, at, at the border, they can actually identify that the person 
uh, they, they say they are, and the person um, standing uh, in front of the camera is the same person that's on the, on the passport. An example, a recent example was an Australian man who used his brother's passport to head over to, um, to depart Australia to fight for a terrorist organisation in Syria. So the visual check, like I say, the guy at customs held up the passport. He said, um, oh, yeah, it looks, looks like him. The customs officer obviously thought the photo looked like the man standing in front of him, and he was able to um, abscond. The biometric check would have probably have prevented that from happening. And uh, I can actually understand that, because people say that my brother and I look very similar. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm a lot trimmer and less grey than him. He, but uh, it's still many people uh, mistake us. <laughs> And better looking, thank you, uh, Mrs. King. Uh, I can only concur with your with that. Um, so, so this guy was able to use his brother's passport. Oh, is that, yeah, I look like you. <laughs> yeah. uh, so he's able to use his brother's passport to abscond over to um, to Syria and and uh, fight for a terrorist organisation, which is exactly the sort of thing that we don't want to have happen or reoccurring. So the Act, the current Acts, and this uh, bill actually uh, amends a, a, a number of Acts, but the, the current Act allows a customs officer to require certain information from a person crossing the border in order to establish that person's identity, including any prescribed document that the officer may specify. This includes a passport and the information contained therein, but the Act does not currently exp explicitly state that biometric information is included in this uh, authority. And that is what this bill is doing. It's, it's a, uh, in all the uh, acts that it's amending, it's making it, it explicit that biometric uh, information can be used. The Immigration Act provides the clear authority to collect biometric information from all travellers on arrival to establish or verify their identity to check that they may enter New Zealand and foreign passport holders on departure to verify their identity and, identity and confirm they have departed. However, in order to act upon border intercept alerts, Customs also needs to be able to use the biometric information of New Zealanders on departure. So this bill is making a number of um, uh, points explicit in the uh, acts that it's uh, amending. So I, I believe there are some seven or so uh, acts that are being amended. Uh, the Parole Act of 2002, the Sentencing Act of 2002, the Mental Health Act, and the Intellectual Disability Act. Now those acts are there because there are some people who maybe need to be in secure facilities because they have a mental health issue or, or a, a disability. Uh, I can think, for example, of my dearly departed father-in-law who had Alzheimer's, I guess. Uh, you know, there's a tendency for some people with dementia to wander, and uh, 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 somebody like, like my father-in-law may have been able to get out somehow, and uh, it would be easier to... Uh, identify him and, and uh, show who he is, certainly because he wasn't able to actually recall his own name or um, and uh, explain who he was. So uh, it also uh, amends the Customs and Excise Act, the Births, Deaths, Marriages and Rel Relationships Registration Act, the Privacy Act as well, Mr uh, Speaker. So Labor supports this bill. We believe it's uh, something that was going to have to happen regardless, despite the, uh, even if the Philip Trainer smith incident had, hadn't have occurred, this was still going to have to happen at some stage in the future to make sure that our borders are, are, are safe, to make sure that people are where they are meant to be, and so we uh, commend this bill to the House. Kia ora.